So what are some of the advantages and drawbacks to using XML? Well, XML has several advantages. First, XML keeps content separate from presentation. You can take the data that your application uses and store it separately from the presentation. That way, regardless of what kind of presentation medium you're using, whether it's mobile or desktop or print media, you can just simply flow the data into various layouts and you can maintain a good separation between the content from how it's presented. XML is also an open format that can be read by many applications. And many applications today also have the ability to output XML, like Microsoft Office. So because it's an open format, you can store your data in a way that can be read by many different applications, even those that haven't been written yet. XML can be used on both the client and the server. It's just a data format. Today's modern browsers like Firefox, Chrome, Internet Explorer, and Safari can work with XML data. You can also use XML data in your applications, whether they're client applications or server applications. They're just a really good way of storing information. XML has widespread support in multiple languages and runtimes. You can use XML from Python and C Sharp and .NET and Visual Basic and Java and lots of other programming languages like JavaScript and across multiple runtimes. XML can be used on the .NET platform, the Java platform, iOS, Android. You can use XML pretty much just about anywhere. XML also makes it possible for disparate systems to exchange data. And these could be systems that were never designed to talk to each other in the first place. Let's suppose you have two computers and you want to share information between them. The problem is one of those computers is modern and speaks a certain language and the other one of those computers is a little bit older and only knows a certain dialect. Well, what do you do? Well, XML can be used to help solve this problem. XML can create a bridge between these two computer systems so that they can exchange data even though they're not aware of each other. XML does have some drawbacks. First, it's not suitable for very large data sets. And when I say very large data sets, that actually might vary. It really is up to you. Once you start getting into things like gigabytes of data, XML is probably not the most efficient way of storing it. You should probably be looking at databases at that point. XML does make it easy to interchange data, but as far as storing large data sets, databases are probably still the way to go. Some data formats like JSON might be better in some cases, depending on how you're going to use the data. If you know that the data is going to be used in a JavaScript execution environment, for example, there are some cases where JSON just might be more efficient. Some data types, like images, aren't represented well in XML because it's a text format. There is a way to do this. You can encode images and insert them into XML documents, but that gets pretty unwieldy pretty quickly. And even though it's possible, it may not always be the best way of doing it. And XML, when it gets really complex, can very quickly get hard to read. Now, if you're not planning on human reading your XML files, then this may not be a big deal, but it is something to be aware of. All right, now that we understand the drawbacks and advantages of XML, let's move on.